Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas, the third of 12 days of size coding and demo scene effects in fantasy consoles. Hope you've enjoyed the content so far. There's no leaderboard, no requirement to show your work, just to enjoy the festivities. Join the Love Byte Discord, follow us on Twitter and Mastodon. There's a link in the description to all of these. If you're stuck, ask for help on the Tiny Code Christmas channel on the Love Byte Discord server. This video is a companion to the tcc.lovebyte.party website, so please check it out for the full picture. There will be a challenge and a size coding restriction on that challenge if you want to take it further. We'll be starting with Tick80 today, so if you're here for Pico 8, you can skip to that section now. Today we are going to be talking about per pixel effects. Essentially, a per pixel effect means that we are going to manipulate every pixel of the screen individually. Now we've used some stuff before like we use CLS and if we run that it clears the screen but what if we want to work with effects that set different pixels. We'll be working with the pix function as we've used previously and we're going to use that function to set every single pixel on the screen. So we're going to start off with a recreation of CLS and just take a look at how CLS works. So CLS clears the screen to a certain color and what we're going to do is we're going to write a for loop for x and we're going to have it start at 0 and go to 240 and then inside that we're going to write a for loop for y and have that go to 136 and what we have here is a variable x that is going to go from 0 to 240. For each iteration of x, so when it's 0, it's going to come down here and it's going to run this, so we'll get x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and y is equal to 1, 2, 3. So we're essentially going to be painting the screen from the top left hand corner down and moving across in that fashion. So I'm just going to set pix x, y to be 0 and I'm going to comment out CLS and see if our code does the exact same. And it does. This first for loop manages the x-axis, the horizontal pixel values, and it goes from 0 to 240. The second for loop manages the vertical, so from 0 to 136. So we start off at 0, and then we go from y 0 to 136, x goes to 1, we go from 0 to 136, x goes to 2, and so on. And for each time we have that, we have an x and a y value that we can assign a particular color. In this case, 0. If I change it to 1, we'll see that it fills the screen with 1. If I change it to 3, we'll see that it uh, fills the screen with the color for 3. So that's the basics of manipulating a full screen um, pixel by pixel in Tick80. Now let's quickly take a look at updating the color based on the position. So if I just make the color equal to x, you'll see that we have the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all across. And then the y, and then the y component is not used in this. So it's only um, anytime it's drawing the x value to the screen, it's going to use the color that is that, that value. If I change it so that we use the y value, we'll see that the stripes go the other way. If we want to get a bit more creative, we can add x and y together and we get this nice diagonal stripe. There's a number of different things that we can try. For example, we can use exclusive R, which gives us this nice pattern. We can use an AND, which gives us this type of pattern. And we can do different things to these as well. For example, I can take my x and y and I can mod it by 3 for example and you can see that it will now only use the colors 0, 1 and 2. Um, so we have our pattern set up and we have our colors set up and you can see that it generates slightly different things depending on the the operator that we used. We can subtract them to get the diagonal to go the other way and what your challenge to do today is to Mess around with these values so that you have a full screen per pixel effect, but you have to animate it. And that means getting time involved and using the time to modify one of these variables or to modify the color that's being used or to um, maybe even modify the position that you're drawing to. But get creative, 
see what you can come up with. The size challenge for today is to get it in less than 128 characters. Don't forget to stop by the Discord if you have any questions. Best of luck today. So today we're going to talk about per pixel effects and that means that instead of using something like CLS which when we run it will clear the entire screen in one go we are going to write code that will access every in pixel individually and set the color individually. So in our first instance we are going to write a replacement for that CLS color and we are going to do it using two for loops. So the first one will be for our x coordinate, our horizontal coordinate, and we're going to start at 0 and go up to 1 to 8. Then inside that we're going to have a second loop and that will be for y equal to 0 to 1 to 8 do. Okay and look I know that the coordinates are actually 0 to 1 to 7 but we'll just leave it at the 1 to 8 for now and we'll, we'll come back to it. Um, when we have this we can use the pixel set function and what this does is it takes our x coordinate and it loops it from 0 to 1 to 8 but when this is on 0 it's going to come in here and loop the y from 0 to 1 to 8. So x will be 0 up here in the top left hand corner and then y will work its way down, we'll move up to pixel 1, y will work its way down and we're essentially visiting every pixel in the screen by striping from the left to right um, uh, horizontally first but then we take care of each vertical line so let's write this x, y, and I'm going to give it a color, and I'm just going to give the color at the moment to be x, so um, or the color to be zero, and we'll just replace the basic CLS. So if I run this, we should get a completely black screen, which means that we've succeeded. And now, just to make double sure, I'm going to run it with a second color and we're good to go. So we've replaced CLS by visiting every single uh, pixel on the screen and giving it a color. So now we can make some more um, effects with this kind of thing. So for example if I add X and Y together I get this diagonal gradient. If I subtract them I get that in the opposite direction. I can use the bitwise operators the exclusive OR to get a nice pattern like this and I can and them to get a nice pattern like this. So you notice that um, when I give it just the X value it stripes all the colors across the screen. When I give it just the Y value it stripes them all across the screen but going down. So so to get a, a bit of a nicer looking palette there's a pal function in tick 80 which allows me to set a the first few bits of the palette to be the colors that we want. So for example I'm going to set this to be 7, 10, 9, 8, 2 and 0 and if we just take a look under the sprite we'll see that we have um, 7 which is white, 10 which is uh, yellow, 8 which is red, then orange, then purple and then black. So that creates a kind of a gradient and we set it with this um, PAL function. So let's run it and see what happens. So we've set the first six to that so we can see that that actually kind of worked there but what we need to do is we need to make sure that since we only have these six colors in the palette I just need to mod it by six so it doesn't go above six. So that will um, take the Y value and it'll go from um, uh, 0 to 1 to 8 but anytime it goes over um, the 6 it'll wrap around again and you can see we have our palette there white, yellow, orange, red, purple, black um, repeating and again we can change that to our diagonal and again in a case like this let's just do this one first you see there's some other colors coming up so we just have to make sure that when we're doing the division because of the order of operators that we put brackets around the x plus y. So let's run this again and you can see that now we have the nice gradient color um, and again I can subtract them to make it go the other way. I can and it to get that nice pattern and I can exclusive or it to get another pattern. So your challenge for today is 
and again we're at 108 characters for this, you're at a bit of a disadvantage compared to tick 80 if we're using this um, palette function up here to reorder the colors. But the challenge for today is to try and get some type of an animated effect into this in 128 characters. So you're at a bit of an advantage in terms of the time functions being shorter and easier to use than tick 80, but you're at a disadvantage by having to rearrange the palette. But you don't have to do that. It's just a stylistic choice. Best of luck with the challenge, and don't forget to drop by the Discord to let us know how you're getting on.